A year ago, an argument could be made that the Seahawks and the 49ers were the NFL's top two teams. However, 2014 hasn't been kind, with both NFC West teams combining for seven losses already. You may remember last season, the two combined for seven losses total the entire season. Both Seattle and San Francisco trail division leading Arizona. The Seahawks are two games behind the Cardinals and 49ers three games back. The man with the answers. Well, I think he has the answers. Coach Herm Edwards joins mm. us at the desk. Now, Coach, I, I have to talk to you about this because talk I, to me. I asked you this morning, I said, will the Seahawks miss the playoffs? And you said there was a 50-50 chance. I think you might have been a more bullish on that at one point, no? No, it's 50-50, and you look at their schedule, uh, it's daunting. Uh, they play five division opponents still left. Uh, and, and they're a team right now is kind of really lost their identity a little bit, similar to San Francisco. We'll talk about them in a minute. When, yeah. when you think about how they won football games, a defense that took the ball away, didn't allow a lot of points, uh, really great on third down, could sack the quarterback. They lost some players. That has hurt them. Huh. Golden Tate, remember that name? Golden Tate was a guy, when you watched him last year, made a bunch of explosive plays for him. You don't see that in this offense right now. Percy Harvin was supposed to be the guy. By the way, Percy Harvin's no longer there. He He's at the gone. Jets, he yeah. Gone. And so now you look at this team, they're trying to find their self. They've got a tough road to hope. They're 50-50 right now. They're right on that line of they're, they're going to need to win 10 games to get in the playoffs. Yes. I'm talking about just getting the playoffs. I mean, talking about winning the division. Okay. Arizona's two games up on everybody in that division, three games up on San Francisco. You don't think they can win 10 games? It's hard. It's a hard league. Remember, they won eight games last year by seven points or less. Mm. People don't realize that. Okay. I'm not, and, and I said they were going to go to the Super Bowl, and I said they were going to win the Super Bowl. It's very difficult, but they won eight games last year by seven points or less. Okay, what about San Francisco? Let's go there. They don't win this week. Uh, they won't get in. They'll be four and five. This is a big game. Th this game will determine if they have a chance to get in the playoffs. They play the Saints. The Saints are 20 and 0 at home. So you're telling me that the Saints hold the playoff future or the San Francisco 49ers. Absolutely. They have to beat the Saints at home. This is a must win. All right. You talk about early in the season, they got to beat the Saints at home. They have to do that. All right, Skip Bayless, he's more bullish on the 49ers not necessarily making the playoffs, yeah. especially if they don't win at, uh, at New Orleans. However, 50-50 with the Seahawks. Your mm -hmm. take. Coach Edwards, you know how much I love you, yes. how much I respect you, but didn't I hear you say earlier this week on Mike and Mike, that Seattle's out? I, said, I, I thought you were, you, you were. I said Seattle was out, and, and, and then I reconsidered. I mean, I can change my mind. Oh, okay? you reconsidered. I reconsidered, okay. and I looked at the okay. schedule, and I looked right. at how they've been playing. I went back and looked at some tape. They've been proved some. So, you know, you can always change your mind. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. This is you America. Can. You can change your mind. And then <laughs> yeah. I can, I'm able okay. to do that. All right. Okay. I accept that. All right. All right. I accept that. Thank okay. you. Okay. I, I, 50 is not 100%, mind. Fact, though. I, I, I know, I know. I think you're <laughs> leaning toward they're not going to make it, which is fine. I'm leaning kind of. I am leaning. I don't know. I, I, you're leaning toward I don't know. Yeah, I don't okay. know. I, I am here. Uh, okay, let us convince you or let me try to convince you that Seattle at 5-3 and three definitely will make the playoffs. I still think Seattle has a shot at winning this division. And again, as Stephen A. will quickly point out, I predicted Seattle would go 15 and 1 losing only at San Diego in week 2. I was correct about that, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be right about 15 and 1, but what I did not foresee was that Percy Harvin was going to start causing internal issues early this season that would require the Seahawks to think they should give him away to the New York Jets. I didn't see that one coming. I will admit to you, coach Edwards, I was wrong about Golden Tate. I thought that Baldwin and Kurse could try to figure it out, and with Percy Harvin as the X factor, I thought they could be at least as good on offense as they were a year ago. That was not the case because Percy Harvin went south. I also did not foresee that losing both those leaders of defensive ends that they lost to free agency in Jacksonville, uh, Clemens and Red Bryant, yep. Those are huge losses because they are not getting pressure on the passer the way I thought they could with their younger pass rushers. That all adds up to it's going. You're right. The schedule is brutal, but I think they could 
I think they can win 11. I'm not going to say that 12 isn't a possibility. I, I think they could go 12 and 4. Mm, okay. Stephen A. Interesting. You know what? I'm really stuck on this one, guys, because I'm inclined to agree with Herm Edwards, Coach Edwards, because of Seattle's schedule. It's hellacious, no question about it. They got two games against San Fran and two games against Arizona on this schedule, um, not to mention some of the other games that they've got on the docket. So I'm concerned. I'm looking at the Eagles and the Cowboys' schedule. Theirs is relatively easier. I'm looking at Green Bay. Their schedule appears to be easier, although I wouldn't be surprised at all if the NFC North crown came down to the season finale between the Packers and Detroit, and who knows whether or not that's going to factor in as to who gets a wild card or if any of them are going to get a wild card at all. It might come down to the only person that goes to the only team that goes to the playoffs from that division is the division winner. But in the end, I don't like what I'm seeing from San Francisco. I coach, totally agree with Coach Herb Edwards that San Francisco has to win this weekend against New Orleans. They lose this game in New Orleans, they're done. They're not making the playoffs. I firmly believe that. But let me also say this about Seattle, Coach Skip. You know what's really, really alarming me? <clears throat> the Seattle Seahawks are the second most potent rushing attack in the NFL. But they're sixth in attempts. Why is Marshawn Lynch only getting the ball 16 times a game? Especially when Russell Wilson, I mean, <clears throat> no matter what we said about him early in the season and him being an MVP candidate after four games, he is clearly not the quarterback that Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and those boys are, not even the quarterback that Andrew Luck is as far as I'm concerned in terms of his ability to make things happen, at least over the last several weeks. Not disrespecting Russell Wilson. I know the brother can play and he's a champion, the reigning champion. But based on how he has looked, the offense has been relatively pedestrian. They're like 30th in the league out of 32 teams in terms of their passing attack. Now, you could point to losing Percy Harvin, but that also makes me think about Coach Pete Carroll from this perspective. This is the player's coach. Everybody wants to say, well, this is the player's coach. This is the guy that had the reputation with the Jets, with New England, ultimately at USC. Now he's with Seattle. He's got the reputation as the player's coach. Fair enough. He was in a, he's a champion at USC. He's a champion now in the NFL. Major props to that man. But my attitude is everybody uses that as an excuse to denigrate Percy Harvin even further by saying, well, if you can't deal with Pete Carroll, if Pete Carroll felt the need to get rid of you, then that, that just speaks volumes. Well, my attitude is, why did you feel the need to get rid of him? Why did you feel the need to, 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 to exit him, to, 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 you know, to, to push his exit out the door? Couldn't you have waited until the end of the season? Don't you owe your players the best chance to win football games? You let go of Doug Baldwin. I mean, you, you, I, I mean I'm sorry, Golden Tate. You let him get away to Detroit, and now Percy Harvin's gone. That's why I don't knock Skip. Skip, you say I'm going to bring it up, but I rarely bring up the fact that you said they were going to go 15-1 and because I understand some of the changes were very, very Every unpredictable okay. and, dare I say, unfortunate. Very unfortunate. There's no excuse for it. So I'm looking at the coach. I'm looking at the quarterback. And I'm even looking at the offensive coordinator, Coach, because I don't understand with, Ball, with Golden Tate gone and with, uh, and, 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 you know, with Percy Harvin now gone, why you're not giving the ball to Marshawn Lynch more. Stephen, you make some great points. And remember this even last year. We talk about Percy Harvin, but really, Percy Harvin, he didn't play. He was hurt. He played up in the Super Bowl, guys. He played in the Super Bowl. And remember this, Russell Wilson last year, guys, he threw the ball, attempts, 407 times. Least of any starting quarterback in the National Football League. Least. He threw, he's not a volume passer. Their game is built like San Francisco's game is built, like the Dallas Cowboys game should be built through the runner. And when you fail to realize that, you get out of your comfort zone. And it hurts both sides of the ball. Not only offense, but it affects your defense because there's a lot of three and outs. This team struggles on third down, offensively and defensively. Why? They're getting more exposed. Because you don't take time off the clock. You don't go on those long, methodical drives. That's the problem. Okay, but, but Coach, I, I hear you about Russell Wilson. If you make him stay in the pocket, he is 5 feet 10 and 3 quarter inches tall. He has a hard time just beating you consistently from the pocket. He has to get outside. He has to hurt you with his leg. And I'm okay with I that. I get all that. I'm okay with that. But, Okay, that's fine. Okay, I get it. But I look down this schedule. So they start off this week with the New York Giants at home. I think they can win that game, and I think they can beat St. Louis at home in the final 
regular season game. Yes. I'm going to ask you both. Are you really, really that sold on Arizona? Because yardage-wise, the defense gives up high passing yards. It, it's funny how they're, they're doing it to get to 7-1. I have the utmost respect for the head coach and the defensive coordinator and the fact that they are creating turnovers and not turning over the ball. But it's a little bit of a flawed 7-1. and one. And what I'm saying is, are you sure that Seattle can't beat them uh, maybe twice? I, I, they haven't beat them twice last year. If they, okay, I know. Arizona beat them up there at the end of the year last year. But what I'm saying is, I'm not sure that Arizona is a juggernaut, and I'm not sure that San Francisco isn't close to, to just mailing in the rest of the year. Like, we're home for the holidays. We got issues with our head coach. We lost in New Orleans. If they do lose this Sunday in New Orleans, they might just – they might be pretty vulnerable down the stretch. Could, are you sure that Seattle can't beat those teams uh, four times? They might. All right, gentlemen. They're I, good enough to. I'm going to let Coach respond, guys, but we got to get out of here because we have to hit another segment. Coach, your take. I, I think Skip makes a great point. Uh, Stephen A. makes a great point. We're going to watch it all unfold. Four weeks from now, we'll have this discussion again, and we'll see where these teams are at. All right. I got a feeling they're going down the path of, we know one of them's not getting in. The other one, I'll say it again, 50-50 shot of getting in Seattle. It's America. You can change your mind. Yes, thank you for being here. Good. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, <laughs> coming up next, folks.